Bill offered during the 9 o'clock break, we're going to do a free lunch a day to our listeners for his new restaurant uh, that's called The Admiral, which is, uh, I'm really looking forward to eating there myself. I'll, I'll be happy to join you. I'm Maria Lawrence, and good morning to you as well. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we continue along here with uh, the uh, chief health officer for the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department, Dr. Kevin McLaughlin. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. And in full disclosure, the father of our producer... Full disclosure, yes. And also full disclosure, he acted like a very, very young man last night, spending 24 hours plus in the emergency room. So uh, uh, so today's the day to ask him tough questions. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how, long, how long have you been doing this 24-hour shift thing, man? Uh, since I've been in the uh, doing the ER uh, gig. Um, so I don't know if everyone knows, but um, I was actually trained as a surgeon. I'm a board-certified surgeon. Um, moved to Berkeley Springs in 98, and um, due to a lot of things um, that occurred, I kind of transitioned over to emergency medicine in about 2006. Um, was it because of that George Clooney show? Uh, no, no, it was not. It just, um, you know, the old adage, um, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of happened, and um, life just took me this way. And uh, so far, for the last 25 years, well, I'm, well since 2006, for the last 18-plus years, um, uh, they've been nice enough to allow me to work in the emergency room, and it's provided me a pretty good uh, uh, livelihood and um, done well. We enjoy... Uh, uh, we enjoyed the Morgan County community and also um, with the ex um, expansion of the other um, place that we have here in uh, Berkeley County, we, we enjoy being here as well. I thought you were going to say, and with the exception of Bill Stubblefield's house in Berkeley County, we enjoy this county as well. <laughs> no, like no, 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 I, I, I'm not going to uh, disparage uh, the Admiral because he's promised me free lunch. <laughs> free lunch. No, <laughs> any meal. Oh, any better. meal. Yeah, yeah. Was he gave me he gave me a gift certificate for any time. That is awesome. That's better than I got. <laughs> Did I do that, or did Bonnie do that? Um, you did. You just don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. That happens a lot these days. Hey, uh, in uh, a couple of things I want to get to with you uh, before we get to uh, vaccines. And one is uh, March is Friday, which I just love March every single year. And it comes around because from December to January to February, everybody seems to get run through with whatever's going around. And this year, whatever was going around seemed to make like a couple of laps on the same person and hang around longer than before. Anecdotal evidence, or was that something that really did happen? Because it seemed like that way to me. There's, um, I mean, even to this morning, um, we're still uh, diagnosing influenza. Um, had an influenza A earlier today, actually a combo influenza A and a, and a strep throat at the same time. And we're just seeing a lot of these uh, respiratory viruses that just um, keep propagating around and around, and then you throw in the, the typical GI bug that goes around every so often. So, I mean, we're inside, we're outside, um, between the air conditioned and then the change of weather and back inside, um, our bodies get stressed in many different ways. And, you know, viruses change, um, our environment keeps changing, uh, so we get exposed to new things over and over and over, and it's just kind of the way our body adapts, and then the next thing comes around. So it, 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 it's just kind of the, a, a life cycle of, of what we go through um, pretty much every year. And anecdotally, I mean, you hear that, mm -hmm. you know, a big snow will take care, you know, just clear everything out. Correct. And those big snows we didn't really have. So, right. and I don't even know if right. that has anything whatsoever to you're do talking about with like it, a hard freeze you mean yeah, like yeah 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 to to take care of things that's but... that's the old wives tale between okay. that and um uh insects etc uh you know the the hard freeze keeps the bugs down mm -hmm. and, and gets rid of certain things uh, you know the hard freeze is also st um force you to be inside your house <laughs> and if you're not changing your air filters and you're not um uh taking care of things appropriately i mean you're just recycling the same air over and over so I mean you just got to be smart I mean and that kind of plays into uh, the whole topic of vaccines mm -hmm. is that 
Um, you just don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, and I hate to put it that way, but um, we, our vaccines basically, uh, the way I look at it, it kind of primes the pump for many things. Um, like when, you know, we start vaccines at uh, a very young age for kids, uh, we know they're going to get exposed over time to many different um, viruses, bacteria, et cetera. And we have developed um, uh, developed ways of preventing or limit, limiting the um, illness uh, by vaccines. And, I mean, they work. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm probably not going to change the minds of a lot of people that are out there that are either pro-vaccine or um, uh, against vaccines. But I will tell you right now, where I was recruited to come to Morgan County is War Memorial Hospital. War Memorial Hospital was the uh, polio hospital for the state, uh, one of the polio hospitals for the state of West Virginia. It was literally put out of business, not needed, because of a vaccine. So we have essentially um, eradicated, I I hate that word, we've uh, essentially minimized um, polio to, you know, a uh, a non-factor right now because of the vaccine. We know vaccines work. Are they perfect? No. Okay. Is anything perfect? Is your car perfect? Um, I mean, are your electrical systems in your house perfect? I don't know. There's, there's fires all the time from bad, faulty wiring. I mean, stuff happens, but we just kind of move on. I mean, stuff, I mean, it happens. Nothing's perfect. So if we're, we're looking for a perfect solution on vaccines, it's not going to happen. But we know they work. I mean, we have evidence upon evidence upon evidence to show that uh, vaccines work. Um, just even a, a local reminder is the is that hospital. I mean it. I mean it's not that long ago. Um, Admiral, um, myself, probably not uh, your producer. Um, <laughs> Definitely not. Um, but saw people who had polio. I mean, and they they walked differently. They they wore they had double canes because you could see that they didn't have their leg strength. I mean. In our lifetime, we saw the stigmata or the um, uh, the term is called sequela, but it's basically the residual effects of uh, what that disease did. Let me add one more. Sure. If you've not seen someone in the iron lung as a consequence of polio, that's one of the most heartbreaking situations you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, it, it literally destroys the muscle to the point that they don't work doesn't mean your mind doesn't work. It, it just means that the muscles won't work to breathe for you. So, I mean, that's where the iron lungs, I mean, we had people, rows of iron lungs. I mean, they used to have an iron lung up at uh, War Memorial Hospital, I think it, but I think it's been moved to another location or, or um, uh, t- it's not there anymore to the best of my knowledge. But I mean, we have a local history of what, vaccines have essentially eradicated so yeah i i want to deviate very quickly going back to iron lung the last person that died from our being in an iron lung for about 60 years died about six seven eight years or so ago due to power failure and oh. had to suffocate so but that was the last person that was still alive but I mean, and she lived for about 60 years 70 years in yeah. the iron lung well doc what happened with the legislature is it hasn't gone through the senate yet and many people say they don't expect it to is the house has voted to relax some of the vaccine mandates in west virginia to bring as they say west virginia more in line with about 40 other five other states that permit religious exemptions so they would allow that now in public school parochial school Whatever, and, and uh, this is what the new well, law could be. It's not yet, but it could well, be. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of uh, religious exemptions. Um, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm, I'm a man of faith, and I understand that. But um, the way it's created and the, way, the pathway forward on just pure religious exemptions is that there's um, 
there's no oversight of any of it. I mean, it could be anybody, anytime, um, uh, signing off on a, on a document saying that there's a religious exemption. Um, and you know, how do, how do I say this correctly? Um, not everyone is, uh, is um, forthright and follows the kind of the guidelines as um, or the path that it should be and the um, d d does it honestly um, that truly certain religions may may not have um, may have uh, you know problems with uh, vaccines I, I get that but not everybody not every religion is going to um, stop you from doing this um, and you know it's just it's fraught with you know too many opportunities for fraud and too many opportunities for people just to circumvent the whole process so I, I'm, I'm not a, a fan of that I, I mean I think that um, if there's a true allergy or a reaction to one of the vaccines um, anything like that there is a um, there is a waiver uh, program through the state right now. Um, it doesn't happen very often because it is pretty stringent, but there is a pathway to get um, a waiver from vaccines. Um, but, you know, once you start opening up, like anything else, um, once you start opening up all the um, opportunities to circumvent things, it you're you're just opening up yourself to uh problems down the road um my opinion and and um pretty much the opinion of of public health is that we're not in favor of the religious in exemption um and it really comes back down to um you know we we've heard this term all the time herd immunity and all that but, but it it's true i mean even with what we're seeing now is, is, you know, you need to have about 90% of your population vaccinated. And then th that uh, disease process essentially becomes um, a non-entity or not a major issue for your community, unless something obviously changes, but uh, it, it's, it's that magic number. And as soon as you go down below that, even not much, those that are non-vaccinated really get hit or potentially got, get hit with whatever that illness is. I mean, I, I'll go through with, you know, so th there's a lot of different vaccines. I mean, I brought paperwork on it. You can go to the American Academy of Family, um, American Academy of uh, Pediatrics, American Academy of Family Practitioners, and look up the whole vaccine um plan from birth on up. Um, but I mean, even uh, I, I'm throwing age into here, the Admiral, um, hopefully he won't take away my uh, lunch uh, that he's given me. But, um, you know, back in the day, I keep saying this because a lot of this has been changed is something called Haemophilus influenza H, uh, and it's one of the vaccines. Now, one of the things that it used to do is called some, cause something called epiglottitis. Basically, it would be an infection of the tissue in the back of the throat, and it would actually swell to the point that it would suffocate people. And it's kids. Okay, these are the people, most of these uh, kids, most of the people that get the measles, the mumps, um, uh, epiglottitis or haemophilus influenza, a lot of these things are actually our youngest ones that really can't speak for themselves that we're supposed to speak for and make decisions of and be protectors for, and there's opportunity to protect, why are we not doing so? Um, I, I, I struggle with it. I'm just, I mean, that's, that's me and that's kind of my position. But I mean, to watch these kids literally struggle to breathe because the back of their throat is literally swelling to the point that they're suffocating. I mean, measles, I mean, you know, people talk about, ah, it's just a rash. No, it's not just a rash. There's people that get pneumonias from it. There's actually 
people that die throughout the throughout the world from measles mumps kids get mumps they um it's a rare complication but um especially in males that get it they can get what's called architis where their um their testicles actually swell get very large and then uh potentially um um will be sterile from that point on i mean there there are consequences for these diseases that we're trying not to have our kids go through um so and by re by repealing the vaccine mandate in West Virginia, your concern is that these diseases will once again begin spreading. Uh, we see in Florida, uh, we saw in California several years ago when they had all the religious exemptions, um, they had multiple measles outbreaks. Guess what? State of California modeled their new plan after the state of West Virginia. What we have currently, they don't have measles outbreaks right now. The ones that are getting the outbreaks are the ones that have la her, have gone down or loosened their vaccine mandates or vaccine recommendations or, I mean, the, the, the vaccine mandates for school to get kids through this to, and to make sure that they're safe and healthy. So I, I know I'm probably stirring the pot out there with with uh some of the people and and i understand um but we know these work um are they perfect no they're not perfect but i mean there's nothing in life out there that is perfect um it's just you know that's ca called life but that's kind of where we go um, and we do the, what we're supposed to do from public health standpoint, what's best for everyone, the most um, of the people that could be affected by it. I mean, we, we, we initiated seatbelts. People fought seatbelts for years, but they saved lives. Um, you know, there, people, some people will come up with, you know, very specific change, um, uh, opportun um, instances that, you know, maybe a seatbelt wasn't the right thing. But how many people have been saved from not being ejected by their car with airbags coming into play? It takes that energy out of the, the accident. And we've made cars safer. These are all things that um, were brought to uh, the public, um, either through engineering um, or through um, you know, legislation where seatbelts are mandated. Um, we we kind of do what, from a public health or public safety standpoint, we try and do what's best for everyone involved. Um, and especially with our kids that can't really speak for themselves, um, vaccines work. Bill, any questions for the doc? Well, I was going to pick up on you said California for uh, California's barred West Virginia's model. West Virginia currently has the highest percentage of vaccination among these kids. Uh, we also have the lowest uh, prevent, uh, uh, preventable diseases because of vaccination. We have a model that is working very well. Oh, absolutely. And uh, but now we're, we're trying to disassemble it. Trying to well, pull, pull it apart. Uh, uh, well, there are concerns uh, about um, uh, personal freedom, everything else, and and that is a struggle that we all have. Um, and coming from um, a public safety, public health standpoint, um, sometimes we acquiesce our personal freedoms or a small portion thereof for the benefit and the betterment of our public. Um, I mean, we have crosswalks, okay? You know, but if you are truly going to walk and, you know, to do things, you have crosswalks, you have crossing lights on busy, on busy roads. You have, you've, we've moved on from stop signs to stop lights crossing major roads. I mean, it's, I mean, we acquiesce a little bit of our personal freedom for 
our betterment and the safety and security of almost everyone or the majority of those involved. I, I know I'm throwing very vague and very large different um, scenarios out there, but it's all on the same premise. So um, to speak about the the bill that the, that the House approved, um, you've got the the person who sponsored the bill saying the stated reason to require most vaccinations of children for public safety, which can only be achieved through herb herb herd immunity, is disingenuous, illogical, ultimately contrary to what we claim to be most important. This is Laura Kimball from uh, Harrison County, who was the lead sponsor. How do we how we arrived? to the point we can defend freedom in so many other contexts, but unable to defend it in the face of mandatory vaccinations is a question we should all be seeking for ourselves. This is her quote um, in yesterday's uh, paper. I don't know what her background is. I don't know if she's a physician I, I by don't, trade. I don't know, um, and I can't really speak to mm -hmm. anything she said specifically, um, but I mean, you can get almost at almost um, any uh, pharmacist in uh, physician in uh, uh, pediatrician in um, and they will support the herd immunity idea um, and as the premise and the philosophy of that um, because in I I mean I hate to keep going back but much like um, we talked many times during the, the COVID pandemic, and I, I sat here several times and said a, a, a highly contagious respiratory virus or any virus, it, it, when it comes into a new area, it, it basically is like a wildfire that just breeds on the, or breathes and lives on the, um, fuel that's on the floor and the fuel on the floor for this situation is those that are not vaccinated and it and it's just a while and it's just going to go through and the people that are um are becoming ill um currently and, and uh, i may not be completely correct but to the best of my knowledge the ones even down in florida right now are the unvaccinated that are getting ill and these are are, are are our, our children that we're exposing to these illnesses that could have been prevented you're talking about measles right the measles yeah, outbreak right, in right now yes yeah. but the measles is just the tip of it because right now um we're seeing the measles and that's one of the the vaccines that a lot of people don't want to take is the mmr um and there's there's a lot of misinformation um out there there's a lot of um, incorrect information. I mean, you know, for many years, they tried to tie vaccines to autism. That has been debunked multiple, multiple times in multiple different avenues. So, I mean, they've tried that. It, it, it's not, it's not true. Um, so um, my biggest thing and um, I think as a, uh, as a, as a parent, as a physician, as a health officer, we have to look at those that rely on us to make those decisions and, and advocate for them and protect the ones that can't quite make those decisions um, either correctly or completely informed um, and do the best that we can for them. Are, are, am I perfect? No. Is public health perfect? No. I mean, I mean, but the thing is, is we do the best every day that we can for our public. No different than a parent tries to do every day for their kid. No different than you would do for any other um, uh, person that you hold dear in your life, family member, personal friend, etc. You're going to try and do everything you can to protect them or help them. Vaccines work. They truly work. And I'm, I'm not understanding. 
I understand the the freedom. I mean, the freedom of choice, but you know, scenario, you know, hypothetical here. Your child comes up five years old. Gets uh, you choose not to vaccinate. Um, they get measles. They get encephalitis, spend uh, which is a uh, inflammation um, of the lining around the brain. Spend two months in the ICU and are never the same from that day forward. Why? Why did we allow that child to do that when we know it can be most likely prevented from getting to that point? That child's life from that point on is just never the same. Doc, on that note, we have to end. I appreciate you coming in. Good information. I appreciate you making the uh, track after the 24-hour shift. Not a problem. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. Dr. Kevin McLaughlin, Chief Health Officer for the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department.